here, uh, ADRA Network Professionals. Um, Anna from ADRA Germany, Kelvin from ADRA Tanzania, and myself from ADRA Canada. Uh, as part of Resilience Technical Learning Lab, we are really honored uh, to be your facilitators uh, for this climate workshop using En-ROADS as a tool. And as you take this journey with us uh, for the next one hour or so, a little more, forgive us for that, we believe you will feel empowered, inspired, and motivated to do all you can in your own ways to address climate change and environmental issues at your personal level, at the organizational level, at your community, at network, whatever that is. We believe that you will go out uh, with some memorable experience. So let me move forward. The agenda for today is um, fairly simple. We will have introduction and then we will have group assignments and a simulation will begin and then we will close it with a debrief. So before we move further, I would like to start with a prayer in a form of a video. It's a climate justice prayer in a moment. O oh Lord, our God, we thank you for the earth, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are your thoughts higher than our thoughts. We thank you for the earth, for the grasslands, the blue sky and white clouds. But the colours, O oh Lord, of the wind are changing. The green grasslands are brown with desert. The blue sky is yellow with sandstorms. The air is polluted, O oh Lord. The water is contaminated and our fishes die. The land is toxic as chemical waste flow. The climate is changing, O oh Lord, and so must we. So we repent, O oh Lord, before you, the creator of heaven and earth. You have given us the beautiful earth with all the wonderful creatures and precious living things to live with and to enjoy. Yet, in our greedy, selfish ways, we have dominated and exploited your creation. We have used, overused, and abused the Earth's resources. We have degraded and destroyed habitats and damaged ecosystems. We repent, O Lord, before you, our Father God, who in love has redeemed your creation and has promised us a new creation where the heavens and the earth will become as one. Give us fresh eyes to see and fresh touch to restore the earth's degraded land, rivers and seas. Teach us to tread gently, to speak softly and to live simply with greater love and care so that all may begin to see a new vision of hope hope that the grey sky can become blue. Grant us a vision of living hope where we live more, love more. Empower us to care in this climate crisis and lift up your creation as we join in all creation to worship you, our Creator God. Amen. 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 All right. So there is a very uh, quick and small activity here. I'm going to share a link in the chat box. And all you need to do is to click on that link. It will ask you to sign up, but don't sign up. And there is a way to skip it. So don't sign up, 
just skip it and it, it will ask you this question. You only have two clicks as options, not more than two clicks. Click number one, where were you born? Look at a map you will see there and just click on the country where you were born and then wait until I say, ask you to click one more time. And the other question would be, where are you right now? Great. Ooh, look at that. So did you do both the clicks already? Can you now do the second click? Where are you currently in? Look at that. Awesome. So we've got people from East Coast to West Coast of the of America. We've got people in East Africa and some in South in, in Europe. A couple of people in South Asia. Also very close to Russia or in Russia, Mongolia. And uh, there is a small, is it the Philippines, I believe. Wow, what a diverse group. So I believe we are coming with multiple perspective. And this is so amazing because you're coming with the knowledge and uh, so much of experience, which is linked to the geography where you're representing. So this is really amazing. Let me go back to my um, presentation now. Okay. So, is an interesting quote, and it makes you wonder. It goes like this. Research shows that showing people research doesn't work. Research shows that showing people research doesn't work. That's by Professor John Sturman from MIT Sloan, uh, who are the ones uh, partnering with Climate Interactive. They have created this En-ROADS simulator. Another interesting quote from Buckminster Fuller, who is an architect and visionary. What did he say? If you want to teach people a new way of thinking, don't bother trying to teach them. Instead, give them a tool, the use of which will lead to new ways of thinking. Amazing. Let me read that again. If you want to teach people a new way of thinking, don't bother trying to teach them. Instead, give them a tool, the use of which will lead to new ways of thinking. And this is where we also would like to introduce to you a tool which is en to be able to digest what climate change is all about. And very soon you're gonna play a role. And at this point, I will hand over the time to my uh, colleague, Anna. Hi guys, can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Anna. Yes. That's it. Now, can you see the lady on the screen? Yes. Okay, excellent. Yeah. So uh, before we start with the simulation, a few general remarks on the Zoom. Uh, in the uh, left uh, lower corner, you have mute and unmute and video button. You can keep your video on, but if you have a bad internet connection, of course, you can switch it off. Uh, also, I mute yourself in a group. Uh, talking about this, mute yourself in a group <laughs> when you are not talking because uh, we are many people to, to make sure that we have no, no uh, audio noise uh, around. Also, there is a bottom of a uh, chat there in the middle below and you can uh, you can write your opinion, uh, write your voice if you, if you cannot speak at the moment. As you open a chat, you can write messages to everyone or to a particular person directly in your group. Uh, as we speak, uh, Avish now will post a link in the group uh, or in the chat. Uh, and uh, don't click on it yet, but uh, he will do this. As he posts it, uh, after I finish this introduction, you will need to click on this link. And uh, you will see there are different folders. Uh, these folders are allocated to each one of your group. And I will explain about this later. Just a few words about Zoom. Uh, so you can also, you also have a ask for help button. And as we redirect you in the groups and you want to return to the bigger group, you can uh, press the leave breakout room button and you will be back to, the, to this general group as we have. 
So as I said, uh, Avish will share with you a link. Uh, clicking on this link, you will find there are four documents. Uh, these doc documents, um, well, there are many folders with the name of the group. You will know the name of your group as Avish will redirect you and you will see it's written on the top. And uh, you will need to go to the folder with the name of your group and inside there are four documents. The first one is the document that is projected now. It's a quick summary of the En-ROADS tool. So you see in the Ed Roads tool, you can uh, see, for example, uh, put up or down energy supply, nuclear, oil, natural gas, play with these indicators and see uh, how the, uh, the world estimated temperature reduces or increases. Also, you see there are a few definitions on the types of energy, types of things. Uh, in this group uh, exercise, we will not play with the actual simulator yet in roads, but it will be more of a mind exercise for you. Later on, as the webinar progresses, we will look at the actual uh, tool itself. So the four documents, this is the first one, introducing the end roads. The second one will be a briefing statement for your group, basically um, a description of the situation or a task that you need to read and follow to complete, uh, uh, yeah. The third one, uh, as you read the briefing and the task, uh, you will discuss what are the possible solutions for this world problem you, you're going to be looking to, to solve. Uh, you will identify three major solutions or three best actions that in your mind uh, are fit to solve the problem. Uh, in regards to what is possible in the En-ROADS tool. Also, you, you will see there this blue box uh, and there is a question how the action that you choose benefit most vulnerable people and what is the added va value and benefits. Maybe if, for example, you reduce uh, coal energy, will it, will it help in some other areas, uh, you know, may maybe the environment or maybe somewhere else, maybe gender equality, you will need to reflect about this. Uh, this exercise will take 10 minutes. Ah, yeah, and the fourth document, you will also find there a picture. And each group has a separate picture. As you go into the group and go into the folder, please make this picture your background. The reason for this is when you all return after group exercise to the bigger group, we can visually see to which group you belong when you switch on your camera. Uh, that will help us. So you will have 10 minutes for this uh, group exercise. Uh, and in the end of uh, when you answer the question, you will need to choose one spokesperson. And out of three proposed solution that you choose, you will need to choose one uh, that is your preferable one and the spokesperson will present it. So without further ado, uh, let the simulation exercise begin and. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention please? United Nations Secretary General has been extremely busy meeting with the world leaders and some of you are here with us today. He's trying to address peace building between Russia and e Ukraine as the crisis is deepening. Despite of this urgency, United Nations commitment to climate and environmental crisis has not taken a backseat. Please welcome the Secretary General of the United Nations to inaugurate the Climate Action Summit. Thank you, Deputy Secretary General, and welcome all to the Climate Action Summit. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to attend on such a short notice. You are gathered here today as key global stakeholders who must work together to determine the best way to address climate change. To start us off, I would like to recognize the six sectors we have amidst us today to witness how each one affects climate change. Amongst these sectors will include the following. Convectional energy, and these are the coal, natural gas, and nuclear energy producers who deliver 95% of the world's energy supply. Also, we will have the clean tech, and these are renewable energy producers, among them solar, wind, and geothermal, and the growing clean tech industries, such as those producing electric vehicles. Also, we will have the industry and commerce, and these are the major industries that drive energy consumption, including automakers and airlines. We'll also have land and agriculture, and these are agriculture and food companies. We will also have the climate justice hawks, and these are leaders of the growing climate social justice 
and environmental justice movement. Last but not the least, we'll have the world government, and these are government leaders from developed and developing countries. The Paris Agreement, as signed by the nations of the world in 2015, outlined a goal of limiting global warming to well below two degrees Celsius. And it aims to get as close as 1.5 degrees Celsius, just slightly above the pre-industrial levels. While this event was pivotal, it was just the start of our journey to solving the climate crisis together. Analysis by the Climate Interactive shows that the pledges that countries made, even if they were fully implemented, we are only enough to limit global warming to 3.2 degrees Celsius, which is far short of two degrees Celsius that we all look up to. Therefore, Excellencies, I have brought you here today to work together within and across our spheres of influence in solving the climate crisis together. The mission of our summit today is to create a feasible roadmap in staying well below two degrees Celsius and aiming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Avoiding the worst impact is still possible, but only if we act immediately. You must balance the need for climate action with that of your own and your stakeholders' needs. I have the utmost confidence in our ability to succeed today. In fact, we need to succeed because we are running out of time to take meaningful actions and everything is at stake. Delegates, I now hand you over to the facilitation by our Deputy Secretary General, who will take us through the rest of the sessions in facilitating this dialogue. Let's all work together to make the Paris Agreement a reality. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Secretary General. It was timely and indeed an urgency that we all are concerned about. And I thank you, Excellencies, Delegates, World Leaders for coming together to this summit. And I believe we can make a positive change. I would like to set a context before you go into your groups so that you understand where we are right now in this climate crisis. Give me a moment. As you can see on the screen here, it clearly shows that from 1850 onwards, from pre-industrial era and up until now, the carbon emissions by source has largely been by coal. And you can see the brown a colored graph here, you can see how much of coal has been used and likewise oil, gas and other and land change. And this is increasing day on day. I would also like to bring this to your attention. The total annual global greenhouse gas emission by gas, you can see from 1850 onwards, 68% of carbon dioxide is from fossil fuel, as you can see clearly here. And the next is your methane at 18% and likewise. And you could see the global temperature change from pre-industrial era. It clearly shows that at least one degree Celsius has increased so far from 1850, and the trajectory is higher than this. According to the studies done, and also the latest report released by the IPCC, we see that the temperatures are going to rise. And it is going to rise and rise by 2100. We are going to see it at plus 3.6. And for those of us in the States and the Western world, it would be plus 6.5 Fahrenheit. What this means to us, what does three degrees Celsius mean? It simply means Arctic sea ice is gone in two out of every three summers. 50% of insect species lose 
greater than 50% of their habitat range. Drought, 11 months longer. Area burned by summer wildfires in Mediterranean doubles. Let's look at what this means to Shanghai in 2100. When the sea level rises, this is the map of Shanghai and all the blue that you see there would be something like this, covered under water. What happens to Dubai? Dubai looks like this today. And some of you are coming from this very place in today's uh, summit. And look at what happens when it is three degrees Celsius, it will be underwater. So our esteemed delegates, we have a challenge before us as been put forth rightly by the Secretary General. Our goal is to bring down the temperatures to well below under two degrees Celsius or even better 1.5. So to do that, we are going to use a tool called as En-ROADS. It's a cutting edge simulation model used to test climate solutions and generate climate scenarios for the future. As you can see in your guide, in the link that we have shared with you, you would find a one pager en road guide where you have 18 different pieces solutions that can help us to bring down the temperature. If only we can work together. And I know esteemed delegates that you represent the power of this world. You have influence. You have control over resources, and we only ask you that you will cooperate, work within your groups, work with each other, and see if we can bring it down to two degrees Celsius or even well below 1.5. So this end roads, which we will share with you in the second round, it's been developed by Climate Interactive and MIT Management. So this is what we are going to use. It's a feature of these end roads are, it is transparent, it's flexible, it's highly aggregated to be fast, and it supports grounding discussions to learn and strategize, which is what we will be doing today. So I'm coming back here once again to remind you what our colleague Anna has said before. You have received a link. Click on that link once you're in the group, which we will assign you very soon, very quickly. And you will have key documents. One is the briefing note. One is the climate uh, En-ROADS tool, where you have 18 different controls that you could use as solutions to bring down the climate, uh, global warming. And then you also have a proposal. So you will make three top priority proposals. It's just one liner. And then out of those three, you will prioritize in your group just one because when you come back in the plenary, you will share with us quickly in just one minute, what is your solution? And then a little bit of context to that. And don't forget your virtual background. Please make sure that when you come back, you represent your stakeholders you represent your group. So without further ado, let me now send you all into your groups in a moment. But I'm really encouraged uh, to see the level of negotiations was happening between you in your groups. And this is really amazing. And I believe you were working as team with one mind and one goal, and that is to bring down the um, Celsius to well below two, if possible, 1.5. So each of the group will have your representative and you will get 60 seconds and it will be timed, uh, 60 seconds. All you need to do is you will tell us what is your one top priority solutions. And I'm gonna bring up the uh, tool right here so that you can see and your information 
will be fed into this tool and we will generate a scenario to test whether your solution is helping to bring down the 3.6 to a lower figure. So you will give me one solution. So can we start with the group number one? Hello. So uh, the main solution we have choose from this one, it's uh, number two, subs subsidize uh, renewable energy. Okay, thank you. And uh, anything else that you discussed among yourself that may have co-benefit yes, when also, you do this, what might happen? Uh, this we haven't, but we also think that this is highly connected with the uh, Number one, make fossil fuels pay their true cost through taxes and the high carbon price. That these two are okay. highly connected. So, this right. So your number one solution is increase the energy efficiency, correct? Yes. In the transportation, correct? Okay. Now, it is plus 3.6. You've got eight seconds. Can you tell me a mental model? If we leverage that, if we subsidize it, what's going to happen how much lower can you get from 3.6 what is your mental model I take a guess from 3.6 to 3.4 okay great let's try that energy efficiency let us increase it all the way highly increased it has come down to 3.5 did it solve the world problem but did it help Yes, it yes, helped. indeed yeah. it helped. Okay, group number two, I'm going to reset the time. You've got just 60 seconds. What is your top solution? So group number two. Hi, um, I guess uh, we can limit um, the production of oil and coal. Uh, you have to choose only one solution, okay. top priority, um, coal or coal. oil. Coal. All right. So give me a mental model. It's at 3.5. What will that do? How much lower can it get from 3.5? Group two. Sorry, probably to two or one. Uh, you mean 3.2 or 3.1? Yes, 3.1. Okay. Uh, yeah. Or you're saying plus two? Um, Which one? It will go down plus two. Uh, plus two? Okay, let's, let's do that. Let us watch what happens here. Coal, oil, gas, these are all global sources of primary energy. So you're saying coal, which is brown in color, if we reduce it, watch what happens. You highly tax it so that they will. You are discouraging industries to stop, uh, you know, stop and uh, start mining so that you can reduce it. So I'm going to highly tax that. What happened? Look at the simulation here. Look at carefully. I'm going to replay that. Look at what is happening when you reduce coal. What is happening to oil? And what is happening to gas? Right? So you will realize that when you reduce the coal, the demand for energy is still high. And because of which, something else is taking that place. What is that? It is either oil or either gas. Did it bring down the temperatures? Did it solve the global problem? Did it? It did not. As you can see, it, we have reduced it by just one point. But did it help? Yes, it did help. So Your Excellency, that was a great solution, but I think that we need to look further and deeper into that. Thank you. So group number three. All right, the top one that we picked, we're going to promote new technologies, including technological carbon removal. Right. And um, uh, did you talk about if you did that, what would be the benefit in terms of health or in terms of clean air? What came to your mind as you were dialoguing? Uh, 
with each other. Edgar, you want to address that? Yes, uh, more than uh, we did not talk about the uh, uh, benefits, uh, Avish, but we we believe that if you're going to take action, this is one of the softer because in, in, instead mm -hmm. of going and opposing the industries that actually handle this and make big money out of it, this is rather by the promotion of new technologies and helping them mm -hmm. to develop and reinvent themselves into new technologies will be rather have more uh, success than opposing them and going very hard on taxations and 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 these kind of actions that usually uh, you know affect the economy and the incomes of these people so it says if you promote new technologies is something that you want to start with excellent excellent i really like that but uh remember that new zero carbon technology is still in the making uh, and then it might take time so i'm going to crank that all the way so just give me a mental model uh, it's 3.3. How much will it bring down? Hey, that is completely out of my of my perception right now. <laughs> I, I will say uh, no more than 2.5. All right. So let's crank that all the way up. It's a high leverage. It has mm -hmm. got us from all the way from uh, where were we? 3.3 3 .3. to 3.1. So it is indeed a high leverage. And if you see this technology, it is yet to be discovered and some are in a very yes. pilot phase, nuclear fusion, you know, high, you know, using water, hydrogen to generate energy and some are still in the making. So definitely yeah. if this happens, if breakthrough technology comes into place, definitely yeah. it will have a higher leverage. So thank you very much, uh, uh, okay. uh, Conventional Energy. This is really, really great. So, all right, group number four. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna speak on behalf of our group, if that's all right. Um, so our number one priority really is to make sure that uh, prices don't spike at any point in time. Um, Considering what some other groups have already presented, I think that our, our preference here is to focus on energy efficiency within the buildings and industry. Excellent, um, excellent, excellent. And what is your mental model? What do you think? How much will it bring down to? Um, 0. 0.3 uh, degrees Celsius. Uh, 0. 0.3, okay. So you, you're following the trend. Okay, let's see where it goes. So energy efficiency in building and industry, uh, look at what's happening here, the sources of global energy. So I'm going to highly increase the efficiency. So very good. Did, uh, did, did, it, did it solve the world problem? But did it help? Yes, no. indeed it helped. So if you can see, you build the efficiency there, but then oil is taking up the space. Uh, because people are still moving to cheaper oil at that point, even when you uh, increase the energy efficiency in building and industry. Great job, great job. So let us go to group number five. That's us. So we chose uh, deforestation as our action. All right. And um, um, can you tell us what is your mental so, model? How much will that bring down to? I don't know, but maybe like one plus two, like. Um, 2.2, uh, yes. sorry, uh, how, by how was, many points? It's at 2.9, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe it will bring down to like two. Okay, so let's mm -hmm. try that out. Thank you very much uh, for that. Deforestation, you will discourage uh, the world to cut down the trees and, and, and protect it. So thank you very much for that, Your Excellency. So I'm gonna crank that all the way up, up highly, reduce it. What has happened? Did Nothing it help? Happened. Nothing happened. Or could you mm. do it again? Yes. 2.9 to 2.8. So a lot of people think that deforestation is a top priority and solution, but 
um, yes, it's a good solution, but it is not a silver bullet. It's um, it's one of the solutions. So great try there. I think we need to go further. So let's go further and see group number six, the world government. What is your top priority there? Yeah, thank you. Our top priority will be to encourage the use of renewable energies. Right, renewable energies. And uh, let's try that. And please, uh, uh, world leaders, can you tell me what is your mental model? What do you think, how much will it bring down to? Uh, 0 0.5. 0 0.5, let's try that. I'm going to highly subsidize so that it becomes so cheap, the solar energy, the wind energy, the whatnot. Uh, there are a lot of things under this. Encourage, you know, solar panels, geothermal, wind turbines, renewable energy includes wind, solar, geothermal, hydropower, and other technology that produces energy with little to no carbon dioxide emission. But remember that, uh, the demand is still very high, but the renewable energy might not be able to meet. Did, did it help a little bit, world government? Mm, only 0 0.2 or 0 0.1. Mm. It has come down from 2.8 to 2.7. Seven. Let me just crank that up, 2.7. So good shot. So. I am really delighted to see, but I would like to now, um, we have tried. I would want to come back and see you all on the video. Uh, esteemed excellencies, you have tried your best, but I would like to invite our Secretary General to talk to you all because we believe this is not the end. Secretary General, back to you. Thank you so much, Deputy uh, Secretary General. Your Excellencies, I appreciate the positive reaction to our ongoing efforts in our different sectors. While it is noted that this is a labor intensive process, we however see it as an important area of our work. Thank you for trying, but this is not good enough. It is not good enough to solving our current climate change problems. Distinguished delegates, we all must be aware that we are meeting at a very difficult time in human history. Recent analysis from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change shows that we only have about 10 years left to enact sweeping solutions to limiting warming to two degrees Celsius and as close as to 1.5 degrees Celsius as possible. The sad reality is that warming above these levels will yield catastrophic and irreversible impacts to the economy and human welfare. And this will be to all nations. Even going from 1.5 degrees Celsius to two degrees Celsius of global warming will still expose 700 millions of people to potential life-threatening climate impacts and poverty. While we face enormous challenges, I'm here to remind you that we have what it takes to solve the climate crisis. The decision makers who can catalyze the solution are here with us in this room. I therefore would love to once again hand it over back to the Deputy Secretary General to guide us all through the next step of these dialogues towards coming with a lasting solution to these climate change problems. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary General. I have great faith in this delegation. And like Secretary General said, we have the solution right here. The MIT Sloan has decided to release the powerful simulation tool so that you can work using that tool right away. So we will encourage you, go back to your groups, five minutes, you will be given the tool to test your solutions again. And I believe if you can not only just stick to your groups, if you can go and lobby and negotiate 
with the other groups, I believe working together as stakeholders, we will have a solution. So without further due delay, we will hand over this open source, fast simulator, very powerful tool and roads to you so that you can test it by yourself to come up with solutions. And remember, you can send your members to other groups to negotiate and try to bring down the temperatures well below two and if possible to 1.5. So your excellency, give me a moment. I'll share with you the access to the tool. Thank you. Welcome back, delegates. I hope you had a fruitful uh, discussions in your group and negotiation with other groups. And I trust that you have a solution uh, to bring down the temperatures well below two, if not even 1.5. So again, I'm going to give you 30 seconds this time. Group number one, uh, can you share with us the solution that you have identified? Group number one. We discussed with Dan and we decided carbon price to increase the carbon price. Right. And can you tell us what is the price that you would like to put on the carbon? Ma maximum. Is it is it ten dollars uh, per ton? Twenty dollars? Okay, I would, I would not want to ask that question, delegate, but I would like to increase it to increase. medium because this means actually it is at $51 per ton. Okay. Remember that when you are giving out this solution, there are many countries who are living under poverty. They will not be able to afford $51 per ton of carbon emission. So we need to think about those developing underdeveloped countries as well. So thank you for that solution. So it has helped us. Did it help us, by the way? It was 2.7. Did it help us? Mm, a little bit. Yes, it did help us. Yes. All right. So group number two, what else? What is your top solution? 30 seconds. Uh, okay, um, our top solution was also carbon pricing, but due to you know people living in poverty and everything, if the prices goes up, it will be harder for them. So our second choice was technological advancement. Technological, yeah. Mm -hmm. So put that all the way to the max, I think. All right. Did uh, did you uh, try and discuss what this really means? Remember direct carbon capture and storing technology, it is still in a very pilot phase. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not yet there. What these machines basically would do is it captures the carbon in the air and stores it deep down under the ground so that it doesn't leak out. Uh, so I believe direct, uh, even, even if let us say, let me just adjust that if this technology right now in the baseline it shows it will come in by 2030, but even let us say if it comes in by 2025, let us say, what will it do? Is it, is it really helping us? Let me... Uh, show you the bioenergy and capture. We can crank that all the way up. Uh, we can talk about direct air capture, bring it there. We talk about mineralization, crank that up. And this one, ag agricultural soil carbon sequestration, crank that up all the way. And the start here at 2050, okay. So we just, playing with that here to see your solutions. But do you think it is helping us 
significantly? Do you think it's a high leverage? No, not not significant <laughs> as much. I think from from different solutions, can you just see here? Uh, it has actually come down from two point five to two. 2.5 to 2.4, isn't it? So yes, the potential is there, but some of these technologies will be realized in some time soon. But until then, I think this has helped us, but not really solve the world problem. Okay, group number, group number four. Hello. Um... For us to reduce the temperature to 1.4, as you can see, we decrease the coal. We can share the screen with them. Uh, is can it shared? We, can we share the screen with you? Is our, is our screen shared with you? You could, you, could, you could tell us your solution, just one solution, number one, the top solution in 30 seconds. The top solution uh, is increasing the carbon, the new zero carbon and electrification. As you can see here, just one solution. The new zero carbon is already yes. cranked up all the way high. So do yes. you want to choose another one? Another one is uh, electrification. Electrification of building and industry or transport? Electrification of transport. Okay, great. We will highly incentivize that. And let's see what happens. It did help us. It's high leverage, isn't it? Yes. Yes. It, no, it's not really. Actually, just by one point from 2.4 to 2.3. Okay. But it's highly incentivized. Yes. Yeah, so that means it's highly incentivized in sense that people can afford it at a cheap cost. Yes. yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Great. Great solution there. Okay. Now, yes. group number five. So we were group number five and we talked about uh, methane and other to, mm -hmm. to move it like all the way. All right, let's move that. Oh, look at that. Look at that, what has happened with methane. Let us do some uh, digestion here. Look at this methane, CH4 emissions. Wow. So in which year it will start dipping? It's by 2040, it will start dipping. So methane is really one of the major, uh, one of the major carbon emitter. And if you look at where does this methane origin from, it's from methane, nit uh, nitrous oxide, F gases is released from sources like cow, agriculture, natural gas drilling and waste. So great solutions, great solutions. This is actually now we are, have achieved, I can say, Paris Agreement. We are under two. Great job. Great job. Let us look at the world government, what they have to say if we can get it to 1.5, which is what we are aiming at. Thank you so much for that solution. World government. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I we were suggesting technology for carbon removal, but uh, I don't know whether you have done it already. Yes, we have worked on that solution. And then Did you have your second priority? Uh, Bioenergies to highly Bio energy. subsidize. Okay. Uh, and I believe world governments came together and used the end roads as, as testing your solution. Did you do yes. that? Yes. Great. Yeah. Great, so we will highly subsidize bioenergy. What's happening? Actually, there is no- Nothing. No, no effect. Difference there. No effect. Because you have highly incentivized transportation, energy efficiency, new zero carbon technology. So I believe there is a congestion in many solutions that we have made. So there is an overlap. So there is an already significant decrease and bioenergy plays a very, not much of a significant role, but it's a good solution. It helped, but uh, you know, minutely at a, at, a, at a different level. So thank you very much. So 
I am happy. So I would like to hand this time back to a secretary general to make a closing remarks. Thank you uh, very much, Deputy, Deputy Secretary General. Distinguished delegates, reflecting on the presentation delivered by each sector today, we now can all agree that there is no one solution that can address climate change. Many actions in many sectors are required. Some actions may be of lower influence than people think, while others like carbon pricing and energy efficiency may be higher influence than people expect. And also, as we have seen, when it comes to issue of methane, Additionally, it's evident that climate solutions should consider equity ramifications and core benefits before being enacted. Climate change impacts affect those already most vulnerable. So climate actions should aim to support these populations and incorporate their best interest in transition planning. Your Excellencies, our proposals today have successfully shown that we can limit warming to 1.9 degrees Celsius as we have all witnessed using in the climate simulation um, by using the Enron simulator, this future is technically possible. Now, we must figure out how to make it a reality. We have taken a huge step forward today by working together across the different key stakeholder sectors to create a vision of a future that avoids the worst of climate change. In closing, I would like to extend my sincere appreciation to all sector leads who have offered presentations today. The Deputy Secretary General, His Excellency Mr. Rish, and the Executive Board led by Her Excellency Anna Krikun, who have organized and successfully delivered this global event. Yes, the journey will be tough, but now we are equipped with a plan. We can and we must do it. Thank you. Let me just wrap up. Uh, can you see? Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes, you can. Yes. Great. So, um, just one or two minutes. Uh, so yeah, this was a very interesting presentation, and we were able to impact the world a little bit with this little cursor and, and a simulation tool. Maybe I could give you not one minute because we're very much uh, delayed, but uh, 30 seconds just to reflect on if you want to be a part of something like this in the future and how this tool or this kind of exercises can be practically used in your life. I will get back to you in a 30 seconds, so just reflect on it. Okay. So how are you feeling now? Hopefully you come to some conclusions. In the end, we have just a couple of questions. Uh, what, what surprised you and uh, what were your key insights? Maybe something new that you learned today, something that you will remember. And how are you going to apply this webinar? Is just a nice webinar or you plan to do something with this, maybe at your work, maybe uh, at your life? We just want uh, one or two uh, opinions of yours. Can you share maybe briefly? Yeah. Thank you very much, um, Anna, um, and um, the uh, the secretary generals and the deputies there. <laughs> really appreciate that. Yeah. What was surprising to me was the uh, the method. Like it was quite a, a big impact. So I think I will try my very best to reduce my beef consumption <laughs> on the practical side of things. <laughs> Thank you. Or somebody else. That's okay. <laughs> uh, so just to two quotes, uh, the world as we have- yeah, Maybe, can I? Oh, yes, of course, please. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for the presentation. I think the tool is very, very nice and handy. Uh, it definitely shows how complex uh, is the, the problem of global warming. And I, I was very surprised how detailed uh, the tool is. But maybe, uh, and I really enjoy it by the way, the, the whole environment, the background, how you do it was great. But maybe in the future, I would also appreciate um, to have more insight into the humanitarian maybe and, and development aid. For example, how, how we can do uh, you know, it, it, all these things in our work. You know? Because this was a general, this was like a, um, like a policy maybe 
uh, for, for policy using for advocacy. But I would also appreciate if it's possible in the future to focus more on, on our activities, like in the field, for example, you know, for the humanitarian development aid. Thank you. Yeah, and the answer to this, uh, well, it wasn't really a question, uh, but the, uh, the answer to this, it is possible. <laughs> We're having a webinar on the 1st of March to address exactly this. Uh, it's about the uh, carbon neutrality in our four offices pilot and the ways how we offset it. It's uh, not yet so much targeted to the projects, but uh, to the our office setup. So if you're interested, please join. Uh, it's on the 1st of March. You will be able to find an invitation in the Hum Hub on the RTLL page. Or just ask me directly if you're not able to find it. Okay, so uh, closing it up. The world as we have created it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it is only thing that ever has. So yeah, we are now quite a small group that come to an end. <laughs> Some people drop out, but uh, I'm pretty sure with the commitment, we will be able to change something as Adra as well. And uh, climate change, as you already noticed, uh, has a multiple layers. Uh, the, you know, they say that uh, 100 biggest corporations produce 71% of global emissions worldwide. And then when you hear it, you think that you as a person probably makes no difference. But also on a, on a personal level, we have some behavioral changes which can contribute, I, I don't know, maybe your consumption pattern, uh, the packaging that you choose, the, the clothes or the items that you procure, how long is the life cycle, how often you replace them. On organization level we are all employees what 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 kind of things we support what kind of conversation materials we share of course on you know on a public level of what kind of government uh, we support are we want to be part of some kind of social government in our countries what is about the culture and the, um, our traditions so there is a multi-layers uh, but um, I think uh, each one of us need to find a place where we feel comfortable and where we can contribute. We don't have to do everything, you know, and be, be overwhelmed, but at least something each one of us can, can surely do. And that's it. Uh, thank you so much. I, I hand it back to Avish to close up, close up, sorry. I need to stop sharing the screen. Well, thank you. Thank you and thank you for your patience and, uh, you know, you made it through. I definitely want us to see in that hopeful, uh, you know, scenario where our children, children uh, will be blessed uh, to breathe fresh air and to drink clean water and eat healthy food. I believe we will leave behind a legacy if we all uh, come together with uh, one mind to make a change. Thank you so much.